presentation is about CSS transitions. Um, it's not hard at all. It's really just a new um, property and value that you can put into a selector to make something happen over a period of time. Um, you know, it's a transition. So we've done something very similar um, when we did rollovers, uh, hovers with filters. You know, we did pseudo classes and we attached a filter on a hover um, so that the filter changed the filter value and the image might go from uh, color to black and white or um, it might um, have changed saturation. Um, but that was an, an, early, an earlier lesson. And this is very similar. We're going to use that pseudo class hover in this demo. Um, we're only just going to make the value change over a period of time. Um, so it'll look like you can see the transition. Um, there's a window in Dreamweaver to do this. It's called CSS Transitions, so <laughs> it makes it easy. Um, and there's also another tutorial that you can watch where I just cut and paste the code. Um, and that is certainly fine too. Like I said, it's really just a few new properties and values that create this transition. Everything else we've done before. Um, what is going to be uh, unique about this demonstration is I have both on these, we're using these five buttons, and I have both a class and an ID selector hooked to both of these. So the ID selector puts in the unique background image because I'm a beer geek and I wanted different uh, beer glasses for each one of these buttons. I had to make different um, ID selectors for every one of these divs. All right. However, these divs have the same class. So let's just go to Dreamweaver and I'll show you. So if I click on this, you'll see that it's got a class called navgn and uh, this um, ID, in this case it's beer button div, in this case it's food button div, in this case it's location button div, but they all have the same class. And the class is what's going to, what we're going to uh, fix the motion to, the transition to, because um, that has attached to it the property um, that has the position, the position property. <laughs> I could say it that way. Okay, so this nav button, if we go over here to our CSS designer and I go down to um, the nav button, you will see that it has a background color set to teal, which obviously we're going to turn off eventually because it'll look much better on that placard. Um, and it has a position that currently has an X value of center and a Y value of 20 pixels. Um, I want, in this case, the beers to drop down as you roll over them. Now I've changed this, of course, this idea, and uh, ultimately what I've decided to do is have an empty glass that will be swapped with the, with the full glass. It's, it's the same idea. I just needed a different sort of image. I needed a background image that had both the full glass and the empty glass. So that one would be out of the frame and one then in that full glass could drop into the frame using the same method we're going to use here. Okay. Um, so note center and 20 are the values because I'm going to change these because I want these all to drop out. And remember this nav button class has been applied to all five of these. Um, so we'll move it like negative just out a frame is like negative 90. All right, so it's out of the frame. Um, we know it's up here. And again, they're all backgrounds. It's the background position. That's the only thing I'm changing here. Um, there's a few other properties that I've associated with this. Um, and they could have all been, I could attach them to the ID or I could attach them to this class. But um, for the most part, I wasn't sure what I was going to change. So I went and attached them all to this nav button, everything that was common between these five. Okay, <clears throat> obviously, the commonalities are what the class is for. Okay, let's, so let's do this thing. Um, we've moved them off the screen here with this background position. So this is the property we're, we're going to change over time. Um, so we go to Window and the CSS Transitions. And it tells us, to, well, obviously we got to hit a plus because there's nothing else that can happen. So our target rule. Um, that's really, they should say target selector. Our target rule is dot nav button. That is our target selector rule. And we want this to happen on hover. So when I hover over it, and I want to make sure um, 
that I use a different transition for each property just so I don't mess anything else up. Um, <clears throat> there's only one um, property I'm changing, so it doesn't matter. Really, it shouldn't matter, but I don't want to mess anything up, so I'm just going to say use a different transition for each property. There's only going to be one, and that property is going to be, um, i got to hit the little plus here, background position. So go down the drop-down window. This is what I'm changing, remember. The duration, I want to be, um, let's say, 0.3 seconds. I don't want to take forever. And no delay, and I want it to do ease in and outs. So just a drop down here, pretty straightforward. You probably all remember those from animation. Um, how things sort of speed up as they ease, as they start, and then slow down when they end. Um, and then here's the important thing, is what my end value should be. And as I saw before, to have these things in the middle, I need the Y value to be center, and then a space, and then the X value to be uh, 20 pixels, right? And then we'll do create transition, and then I can turn that off, and we can watch what happens. Ooh, look at that. I haven't linked these guys yet, so you don't see my um, little finger. But I'm going to do that soon. All right, so that's all there is to it. CSS transitions, this window here. Um, let's check out what it did to the code. Also, we should probably just go ahead and save this and save this and make sure it is working in our browser. So I'm going to hit the little fresh here. There we go. Mm, five alarm chili. I'm also going to swap this out with a animated GIF. I can do that. Um, there's a refresher video for that as well under this week's lesson. Okay, so in terms of the code, let's just go straight here and scroll down. Um, here's my nav button, starting on line of 104. Um, that, got, that got a little weird. Let me do this. I'm gonna, Make sure that's, okay, there we go. Didn't put that curly brace in a very good spot there. Um, here's my nav button, and all it added, and it added it to, notice it added it to my original state, um, my original selector, that had this web tra WebKit transition, background position, 0.3, ease in out, um, and it did it for different um, browsers, so that's why there's basically three lines. Um, and then here, on line 122 to 124, is the new um, selector that it added. Again, it's a pseudo class selector. That button hover, so it's just this with a colon and hover appended to it. And all it does, it changes one thing, and that's the background position. Now, I can change whatever I want. Um, and now that this is set up, if there was something else I wanted to change, um, any CSS property, I could add it here if I wanted to. It'd probably be easiest at this point to just you know hit a return and type in the property and value, and that would be cool. Okay, let's jump back. I want to fix this before I leave to let you guys know this isn't going to look this ugly. <laughs> There's a few things I want to do. Turn off these backgrounds. Um, there's my header. Turn off that background. Um, Mighty Quinn, Nav, we'll have a I put a background and everything just so you guys can see how this was set up um, since you're getting these files. thought that might be helpful. Logo Div, we're going to swap that out also. Um, in fact, let's do that now. I'm going to show you my other, I have, um, I'm looking for properties. Okay, so. Remember, if you want to switch out an image, it's pretty straightforward. I just need to remember what my image is called. It was called header background lines. So I can use this point to, or I can hit the folder, icon, and background lines. I'm going to put open on there. Oopsie. That's not what I wanted to do. That was for the, never mind. God dang, I can't believe I just did that. I want to swap out my with my animated picture so duh let's put my animated picture in there 
Let's see, have the logo PNG, I need my logo GIF. Oh, there it is. It looks crappy on here because it's against white background, but I knew it was going to be against the placard, so I actually put a brown background on it when I made it um, so that you won't notice that um, the aliasing because it'll be against brown. So you'll see it'll look super nice. There it is. Ooh, I took those pictures of Guinness myself, and then I had to drink it because, you know. Okay. Oh, the, the last thing, the lines. I did want to switch the, put those, the reason I... Um, put in the thing I did originally, the lines, is because I was thinking ahead. Um, what I want to do with um, my header here is I want a background image. I don't want this placard just hovering there. I want like these lines holding it up. And I want those lines to fit, you know, this placard automatically centers, this whole piece automatically centers. So um, what I want to do with this is um, attach a background image so I'll turn this off, click on backgrounds, go to background image, hit this guy, and I need some lines, lines. It's two lines, just like that. There are pings, um, and I'm gonna click open, and I'm gonna change the position a little bit. So I'm gonna set it to tile, um, um, background repeat. I just want it to repeat this way, and you can see one of the lines, the other one's right up here, so I also need to move it down a little bit. So um, I'm gonna go pixels, and um, I need the Y value, good Jeff. Pixels, and move it down till it looks like it's just about, see I lined it when I made it, I lined it to this, and all I did was crop out a tiny little piece and save it, as a PNG, I just did save as and saved it as a PNG. I didn't even use an asset generator um, just because I wanted to be very specific about the sliver I needed. And so what it's doing is it's taking that tiny little, two little dots and tiling them all across all the way in um, the horizontal dimension because of that. All right, cool beans. So now I have a background image too and that will expand and fit the screen no matter what. So let's go ahead and save, and save this, jump over here to my browser. Ooh, look at that fill up. So that's set to happen only once, by the way, when I exported this uh, animation um, from Photoshop, I told it to be a GIF that only ran through once. There we go. I'm ready for some chili now. And um, all right, any questions, just send me an email.